What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics, and how are you doing today? So with winter coming up, the snow will soon start flying, and we're going to need something to get rid of that with. So I thought I would pick up this amazing GMC pickup truck with the snowplow edition, and this is a Ravel kit. So without any further delay, let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. So now let's wind the clock all the way back to those happy days of 1978, where we get to check out the GMC pickup truck with the snowplow. This is an amazing kit made by Ravel for ages 12 and up, skill level 4 in 124 scale. On this side of the box we can see the cool features of this truck, including the roll bar with the lights on it, the spare tire and the gas tank. Here's a rear three-quarter shot showing the truck again, and the front with the plow and the winch. And here we have a really interesting motor. This almost looks like the fuel injection system from a 1957 Chevrolet. On this side of the box we can see the features of the truck, like the length, number of parts, the color it's molded in, and the style of decals. And down here we also have a write-up and some of the features of the kit. Over here we have a paint chart telling us everything we need and a little picture, a very tiny picture, showing an alternate decal build of the truck. Now let's take the lid off and see what's inside our GMC pickup with the snowplow. So right away we get our instruction sheet and here are the decals inside the instruction sheet. Then we've got our clear components as well as our white plastic parts here with the plow in there. We have our cab and our pickup bed body, as well as the interior. Here's some tires. So let's grab this out of here. Got our hood and our interior pieces, as well as all the engine components and other goodies. And then at the bottom of the box, we have our chrome. So let me just remove this out of the way and we'll take a look at the instructions and see how this thing is built. I bought the pickup truck today at Michael's and I noticed that they had their Christmas display stuff out from Limax for 2023 and I noticed something really cool about this truck and the figures for the Christmas set. Now I noticed that a lot of their little figures and accessories seem to be in 124th scale or possibly 125th scale and they would be quite ideal for the uh, snowplow to use in a Christmas display if you wanted to build one of these Christmas villages from Limax or just something as an accessory to add. So here we have like Santa Claus with children, we've got a snowball fight going on, we also have a reindeer that's eating the carrot off a snowman, and then over here we've got a family of reindeer, and then look down here we've got trees and mailboxes and a sign for Santa. And we also have a snowman here meeting a little friend. I mean, there's a lot of cool things. Take a look at these uh, kids up here in an inner tube going down a snowy slope. And then there's this girl that's got a um, guitar and she's playing for a change or whatever for Christmas. We also have this family welcoming back their son with the dog. I guess he's gone off to school and has come back for Christmas. There's also these trash cans with raccoons, and then there's squirrels on a tree, and Santa Claus, and these penguins. I'm not too sure on the penguins, but something like the Santa Claus would be really cool with this sort of thing. And again, I mean, check it out when you're up at your neighborhood Michaels, and see if this kind of stuff fits in with your truck. Our instructions begin with this wonderful three-quarter front view of the pickup truck itself, a photograph that has been changed from color to black and white, and of course this is a Ravel GMC pickup with snowplow. And down below we also have the write-up on the truck in three different languages. In addition to the paint chart and the parts list by name, we also have these symbols which will tell us about our model kit as we go through and build it. Panel 1 shows our engine going together in multiple steps. So first off we have the engine block right and left hand sides going together with the oil filter here which is molded in place. So what we have is aluminum for A and white for K. And then here we have the valve covers going on. And you do have a choice between the stock valve covers which you'd paint aluminum or the chrome plated special 
valve covers. We also have a chrome plated intake manifold. And then here we have our water pump and timing chain cover going on as well. And there's our cylinder heads down below. So again, we have these painted in aluminum. And then down here, we have iron for the headers, as well as the exhaust coming off. And there we have the intake plenum going on top. Like I said, this looks very much like a 57 Corvette type of fuel injection system. Here we have the belts and pulleys, and there's a little alternator being glued on right there. It's actually the back of the alternator. And here we have our fan. So the letter F here represents a satin black for the belts, and that only makes sense. Panel 2 introduces our completed engine block onto our chassis, and here you can see the frame has the side-mounted gas tanks, as well as the exhaust pipes and mufflers molded in place. And then here we have our two-piece transfer case being glued together, which is painted in satin black. The frame is also painted in satin black as well. Panel 3 shows our suspension being mounted onto the frame, and here it is a four-wheel drive setup. So we have a front and a rear differential, and the front has the steering on it as well. And there's a cross brace as well as one down here. These are like anti-sway bars. Same as here in the back. We've got our leaf springs all the way around, and we have our differentials here which will hook into our engine on that transfer case. So again, all these components are painted a satin gloss black, semi-gloss black. Panel four shows our shock absorbers being mounted on and each side has two shock absorbers for a total of eight shock absorbers on the entire vehicle. And then here we also have a bar for anchoring onto the rear differential. These parts are painted in white on the shock absorbers. Panel 5 shows our wheels going together with our outer rim right here, which is chrome plated, going into our tire. Then we have the wheel retainer as well as the back of the wheel, which they recommend painting in aluminum. You make up four of these and do not put any glue in here on the wheel retainer because it'll go on the inside once you mount them onto your axles which is shown down here. So there's the wheels going onto the axle stubs. And then here we have this little cross brace being glued in place, which again is satin black, which would match the rest of the frame. Panel six shows our interior components being glued together. And you have the option of the good old CB radio because this is 1978 after all, and that was the era of the CBs. So here we have our dashboard and the color here is B, which is a satin brown color. Same as on the steering column and the outside of the steering wheel. And our center steering wheel is chrome plated. So look for that on the chrome parts tree. The pedals are satin black down below, as is the little knob on the gear shift lever, or actually the turn signal lever. And over here we have our dashboard complete being glued into our interior bucket. And we've got a gear shift lever chrome plated, which goes into this hole. And they're recommending satin black on the bottom and the brown on the top. Here is a body assembly step that we've seen in many of these instruction sheets, especially from Ravel trucks, mainly in the GMCs. What we have is an open area in the back and the back panel gets glued in from behind. But let's go through this. We have a chrome plated mirror, our clear glass. You have the option of cutting the roof open for a clear sunroof down here. There is a little brace which gets painted satin, and our body is C, which they recommend being painted in orange. But because it's a body color, you can pick any one of the GMC colors that were out there at the time. And then here we have our back panel, which will glue into here, and that they recommend in orange. And there's our clear glass being glued into the frame back here. Panel 8 is a two-parter. There is a little more down below, so we'll take a look at that in a second. But to begin with, let's get our radiator support wall and glue the fan shroud to it. Paint both of these with that satin black and then attach that to the front of your truck. And then here's that completed rear panel, like I said before, being glued to the back. Once that is all together, your interior will go up from underneath and then your cab will be partially complete. 
Here we have the second part of assembly step number eight, and this shows our grill being put together. So what we have is our chrome plated grill, and you can paint inside here with the satin black in those squares, or like Pete does on Pete's model cars and customs, he actually grinds out the back of this so that this grill is open like it should be on the real truck. So here we have our headlights going in, and remember to get those north and south, east and west, and not at some weird angle. And then you paint your parking lights there with clear amber, and that would make your, actually they're turn signal lights, they're not parking lights. And uh, so now we've got our completed grill, and that will go onto the front of the cab, and down below we also have our chrome bumper, which glues onto here. Panel 9 is also a two-parter, and what we have is our cab being glued onto our chassis. And here it shows these little pins which go into here on the front of the frame, and then your cab would, like, tilt backward onto the frame and get glued down here on these points. Here we have the second part of panel 9, and we can see our hood being put into place on the cab, and they recommend painting this orange. And then we have our upper radiator hose, which will go onto the top of the engine and into the radiator up here. Panel 10 is also a two-parter, but first off, it shows opening up the holes here if you want to add in that roll bar. Paint the bottom with the satin black, then add your fenders painted orange on here, and the tailgate. Here we have the second part of panel 10, which shows the pickup truck bed being attached onto the... Panel 11 is also in two pieces, and this shows all our accessories going on the truck. So these are all optional. You would build two of these. These are spotlights. So there's a lens going into the back housing. You got a clear part and a chrome part. Then here is the roll cage top bar. It says to paint this satin black. You have your antenna for the CB radio, which goes in the center. And then those two lights, which go on either side. And then this whole unit will drop into those holes that you drilled, if you wanted to go that way, into the truck bed. And we also have these cool looking chrome rails, which will go onto the tops of the bed. The second step in panel 11 is to add in the supports for our roll bar. And that's the right and left hand side ones. And these are also painted in satin black and go into the back holes here. And the holes are right beside those lights. Panel 12 is also a two-parter, so what we have here is the back of the truck, and it says here to paint this silver in behind our lenses, and then our lenses themselves will be painted white just in the ends for the reverse lights, but the majority here is clear red, and then our rear bumper will glue onto these points back here. Carrying on with panel 12, we have our two-piece gas tank being glued on here. And the nice part is it's molded with this belt in place, so you know it's secured to the back of the truck. We also have our two-piece spare tire. Now these are all optional, and if you look down here, you've got your gas tank being mounted right here on the tailgate with that strap. And we also have this special little retainer, and that's for our spare tire to be mounted on on the other side of that tailgate. And they say to paint this with the satin black, as well as the case here is also satin black. And over here, we have the grayish green flat paint color, which is supposed to be like a military color. Although you could also paint these red, which is sort of common in the civilian world. Panel 13 shows our two-piece mirrors being put in place, and we also have these mud flaps up front, which are optional, and these are chrome-plated, all the components here, and uh, that would look really nice with these side mirrors going in place, just to give an extra bit of visibility around the truck for the driver. Panel 14 shows our optional snow plow being assembled. So what it calls for is painting the plow itself red and the bottom strip satin black. And then here we've got the back of the plow. This is the handle of the shovel, basically. And they're saying to also paint this in fire red. And then take a look here. You've got all these really cool springs which glue into place. They go on the bottom of this beam here and then up to the top of the plow. And we also have these gas shock cylinders, which would be in operation to lift and drop the plow plow and it says to paint right here on the shaded part with aluminum but back here you paint that also with fire red. Panel 15 is a two-parter again and what we have here is the 
engine for the snow plow or the motor and that's the top and the bottom being glued together. Once you assemble that we have a frame here which you would paint satin black as well as this component here which is also satin black and this engine or motor would be glued onto the frame support. Then we have the lights up here. Now these are clear but on the corners you would paint them with amber then in the inside of the housing, you're painting that with silver, and the outside again is that satin black. Here is the second part of panel 15, and we see our plow being glued onto the front of the truck, as well as that entire mechanism being glued on top of the bumper here. Panel 16 shows two different options for decorating your truck, and here we have a decal going in for the side marker lights, in this top one, we have white stripes going along here. We also have this really cool decal showing a tree in summer and winter. And then we have all the services that this corporation does, like mulch, topsoil, sod and seed, and patio stone. And there is a flammable decal which goes on the side of the gas tank right here. So looking at the second variation, this is the snowplow specific variation. We have glacier plowing down below and then the jobs that they do with the snow plow system. And there's that flammable decal once again going on that gas tank. In the lower part of panel 16 we have some options for putting decals on the snow plow. One of them just being the typical white and red stripe here, the warning stripe. And then the other option is these crazy looking angry eyes for the snow plow. And then on the back we also have a decal that says XYZ Snowplow, and that would be like a manufacturer mark on the back of the snowplow itself. Then up front you have this option of adding in the sun visor decal, which says GMC, or the sun blocking, you know, decal, the one that goes across the top of the windshield. And then down here you've got your options of license plates. Then out the back there is also a decal that says GMC in this really cool Star Trek style writing. Star Trek the motion picture kind of thing. And then we also have a 4x4 decal which you can put on the back of the glass and license plates decals and we also have that red and white. This is supposed to be a reflective strip down here but I don't think they have a reflective strip as a decal thing. And then it's also up across the top as you can see there. Panel 17 has these really cool photographic images of our truck in black and white. The first one being the front three-quarter view of our GMC snowplow. And the second being the rear three-quarter view of our snowplow. So we're going to examine the plastic parts by first taking a look at the cab of our GMC pickup truck. And here you got a lot of stuff under the hood. Dual batteries, which is really cool. So one of them would be for the snowplow itself for charging up that motor that's in the front and we also have our windshield wiper bottle and the tops of the fenders and then here we've got the little uh, cowl up there with our windshield wipers on it we've got some big slots for the opening hood and this really nice firewall which you'll have to do a lot of detail painting in order to get all these little wires and everything the front looks really good just like a GMC should and we do have some mold marks up underneath, which you'll have to take care of. There's that little sunken in portion if you want to cut out the sunroof. There's also a whole bunch of writing up here, so I don't know if you want to get rid of that in particular. You also have four mold marks in each of the corners there. The side is pretty smooth. I think trucks of this era kind of were. I know the Dodge was from the AMT or MPC kit that we looked at earlier in this video series. We also have the little side marker lights here, which you can add a decal to or paint. And there's our GMC door handle and the door lock itself. And as you can see, the back is wide open, but there is a little bit of a sunken in ridge around here. You might need to clean up some of this with the number 11 hobby blade by carefully dragging it inside here, because there is a lot of uh, distortion in the plastic. But overall, I mean, this thing looks pretty good and with a bit of cleaning up, I'm sure you can make it work. On this parts tree, we have the truck bed and the sides, as well as the tailgate. There is the little holder for the spare tire, as well as the roll cage. 
So taking a look at this, we do have some nice detail. It is rather soft, really, compared to what's out there. But you can see all the nice slats in the truck bed. Now I'm not sure if those would have been wood or stamped at this stage. Probably steel stamp. Uh, there's our rear fenders with the gas filler right there. And then there's our tailgate door with the little handle, which seems to be quite accurate as far as I remember these old trucks. Turning it over, we do have some ribs on the back of the tailgate. I don't know if this is going to be covered or if that's the way it is. And then inside we have some mold marks which will have to be removed. And the bottom also needs to be flattened down. There are sink marks in here, which are also part of the mold marks. So it is nice and smooth underneath. You could easily fill those or sand down to that level, but you should be able to get rid of them with a little bit of effort and elbow grease. There are some seam lines on here which will have to be sanded down, but overall it should be quite basic. This parts tree includes the hood and that back rear panel, and there we have our two-piece spare tire, all our wheel retainers, and then a bunch of those different braces and whatnot for underneath, and here we have our interior bucket. So bring this up to the camera and you can see again really cool detailing on here. Again quite simplistic but I do believe that was your 70s trucks. There's a steel stamped panel in the back again and then take a look at that spare tire. It looks really good. I like how they have the stretched fabric. It looks just like a real spare tire cover. There's our interior bucket. Remember to paint this brown <laughs> or whatever GMC color you want to do. Brown, I do believe, was quite a popular one in the 70s. Now the inner door panels are quite smooth, so you might want to do like Pete does and add in all those extra little details. There we also have sink marks on the carpet. And one thing you could do is paint this and then use some flocking while the paint is still wet and then sprinkle the flocking in here and that'll give you a nice brown carpet provided you're using brown flocking. And once your paint dries, the flocking will all be stuck into the paint, so that'll secure it. We also have the gas pedal molded in place here, which is pretty cool. So again, overall, this is quite basic, but should look quite nice. Here we have a stamp saying copyright 1978 Ravel. And then there's also a new black stamp here saying Zongxian, China. That's where it's now being produced. Used to be good old USA, but now it's uh, shipped out overseas. We have sink marks in the four corners under the hood. So again, a little bit of filler and careful sanding. And you should be able to restore that to make it look like it should. No fireproof matting under here. It's all smooth, so you could add that in. Even the same way as you would with flocking. But overall, this will look really good once you add in those additional details. I have two parts trees to show you next. The first one is our chassis up top, and then the bottom is all our suspension, drive shafts, and differentials for going onto the chassis. And we have our fan and upper radiator hose, as well as the wheel backs. So let's just take a look at the chassis on its own. And again, you can see the nice detailing in here. The gas tanks look accurate. There is some more writing. Revell Incorporated 1977 China. That's interesting, but again, you can always sand that off. The uh, fuel cells look really nice on both sides of the truck. And we also have the mufflers molded in here right on the brace of the uh, chassis and then our exhaust pipes. And you can see quite a bit of flash along here or hyperextended seam lines, however you want to call that. There are some sink marks in the chassis. Again, a little bit of that Tamiya spot filler, or your choice of filler, will help to get rid of those. There are mold marks up underneath, and some of them are on some of those braces. So just check again with the body and that truck pickup bed to make sure that none of those are interfering with the fit and finish of your model going together. So then over here we have that rear suspension and the front suspension with the steering linkage up front. So again, it's really cool stuff on here. All that four-wheel drive technology to help get you through the snow. 
Again, nicely molded, but there is a seam line up the center of the differential, or right there, which you'll need to get rid of. And here you can see the shocks mounting four there and four there. That's for the tops of the shocks. So overall, this is looking good, much like the top of the pops, but those are the top of the shocks. On this parts tree, we have the right and left hand side of our engine block with the starter motor and the oil filter in there. Then we have our dashboard and we've got our radiator support wall with the radiator molded in place. Fan shroud for the back of this. We also have our two piece jerry can, jerry gas can, which you can paint either red or that military color. Then we have our cylinder heads for our engine as well as our valve covers, two piece transfer case. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight shock absorbers, which is really shocking. We also have our water pump and timing chain cover and our right and left hand side exhaust manifolds with the tips of the exhaust pipes. And then we have this push bar up here, as well as this component. These might have been from other trucks. I'm not entirely sure. But right here we have the braces for our roll cage, as well as our steering column, and then our belts and pulleys, and the back of that alternator. So bringing this up to the camera, we can see that Ravel did put in some effort into detailing here. Again, everything is still quite smooth, and with the simplistic engine, I don't know, people call these blobs, but I don't really see that they're a blob. It still looks pretty good. It's just that the starter motor goes right into the side of the engine, whereas in reality it would just be a circle out here with a little bit of a space on the bottom here, right beside the oil pan. But anyway, there's our dashboard. Again, this looks really good as a dashboard. Uh, you got your gauges in there and all the little tiny gauges up here for like your battery and all the rest of that stuff. And here's your speedometer and a clock or whatever is it up in there. I'm not too brushed up on the dashboard of these. And it's kind of funny because I've ridden in a bunch of these in the winter time, helping a friend of mine shovel snow. I should know this dashboard perfectly. What's the matter with me? Anyway, there it is. There is a glove box in there as well. There's our radiator support wall, again looking really nice. The detail on the jerry can is quite great. And the cylinder heads are a little bit soft, but you probably won't see them quite as well. Let's flip this thing over. There we've got mold marks, which you have to address again with that number 16 hobby blade. But most of the other mold marks are all hidden in behind, so that's a relief. And again, you can clean up this push bar and use it on something else, maybe a, a car or something. But again, overall, this is quite nice and does have a level of simplicity in it, which will help the younger builders. Here we have another two parts trees, which I do believe you could save these if you didn't want the GMC pickup truck to be a snowplow unit. You could add these onto other Ravel kits or maybe even some AMTs or whatever else you have in your collection, MPC. So here we have the snowplow itself and the lights and those shock absorber, or sorry, these are the springs for it. These are those piston shocks. And then we have that front shovel handle, I'll call it, as well as the mounting down here and that two piece electric motor to operate the whole thing. And then there's the frame for the lights, which glues up on top of the bumper. So these parts look really great. Uh, <laughs> great, it's, it's almost a grater, isn't it? But yeah, that's them, and you would paint the bottom edge here with the uh, flat, semi-flat black to simulate the rubber. That would be down here. Yeah, that's right, because these little holes are for those springs. Now, there are mold marks on the back of the plow. Again, you'd have to fill them, and mold marks up under here. Those mold marks are really pesky, aren't they? But at least I'm showing you where they are. But overall, I mean, what do you think of that detail? Let us know in the comments down below. Here again, we've got the other bits of the plow. Very nicely done. There's that engine, electric motor. It almost looks like a, a motor from a generator. One of the old school car generators before the alternator. There's your two posts in the center of the engine, it's, or electric motor itself. So yeah, that's what it's gotta be, like a winch motor. But yeah, overall, again, this is really awesome, and you could add it to basically any truck you want as a snowplow. Here we have our chrome components, and again, these are nicely plated. 
There's the front grill, our four wheels. There are quite a few different pieces on here, which I don't think are quite in the instructions. But uh, there we've got our intake manifold as well as the plenum for the fuel injection. And these look like our mud flaps. There's our gear shift lever. I think this is our rear view mirror. There's quite a bit of flash on here. But the Molotol chrome pen, if you clean up your flash, will match the chrome and look great. And you won't even see where these cutoff points are. Look at the bumper. It's got the bumper bolts in there, so that's always nice. And then, oh, these are for the mirrors, the side mirrors. These are the brackets. And then there we have the rails for the back of the truck, which you can use on anything else if you don't want to use them here. This looks like a chrome motor. Um, is that part of the winch thing? I can't quite remember. Here's our optional valve covers, small block Chevy ones. We also have our steering wheel and those fog lights. Again, really nicely done, though. You can see that the holes in the wheels are open. There's my finger in behind. The grill is the only thing. You would paint all these rectangles with flat black, and then the GMC logo with red. But as Peter would do, he would take and grind this whole thing out carefully. Zzz, 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 maybe with a Dremel or something. Maybe Pete can let us know in the comments down below if he watches this video. And that would remove this in here, the back of the grill, and leave it open to the bars. And then you'd be able to see in through the grill. And with your radiator support wall being painted semi-gloss black, it would show right through to the semi-gloss black through those openings. And it would look more like the real truck. Here we have our clear components, which consists of our windshield, our sun or moon roof, and our rear window. We also have our headlights, the little lenses for the fog lights, our rear tail lights, and the side, or actually, what were these? This, oh, these are the fog lights, which go on that uh, roll cage. So again, you can see the nice detailing on here. There's the side marker lights. Add a little chrome around the edge, so it looks like the proper chrome frame in here. And you can see the little side marker light, or sorry, the reverse light. And that's a little raised bit in this corner. Overall, again, really cool stuff. And make sure you get these headlights facing north, south, east, and west, and not at weird angles. But overall, the clear is really good in this kit and comes in a bag so it won't get scratched. Here we have our tires for our snow plow and the actual manufacturer's name and the nomenclature for the tire has been removed on these. As you can see on both sides, they are slick, which is kind of unfortunate because I liked seeing, you know, a Goodyear Wrangler or whatever they were on there. And then here you can see that nice tread pattern that's on there. Perfect for the winter and the snow as well as the pie crust edges along the ends of the tire. So again, these are really cool. With the tire spinning tool, you should be able to clean them up and make them look like they are worn to the actual pavement. Here we have our decal sheet, and these include the original white GMC stripes for 1978. We also have this cool decal here, BGL Lawn and Tree Service. And this kind of makes me think of the MPC 1978 Dodge truck, and it's got that decal for lawn mowing on there. So this could kind of be like a rival company. Or if anybody's got spare decal sheets and you don't want to use this one, it would be nice if I could get those. <laughs> but at any rate, then I could make both of them the lawn and tree service company. Here we have the Glacier Plowing decal. And that's where those eyes are in there. So you could paint your snow plow yellow to match so it looks like the same sort of truck. And here it shows the roll cage being white in the back, or the roll bar, sorry, being white in the back instead of black. So maybe you could paint your truck to match the decal on the side so that the whole thing is sort of universal. <laughs> the eyes look a bit sedate down here, but you're supposed to pitch them up at an angle so they look a little more angry. There's that reflective sticker striping for the back of the truck as well as for the plow. And then here we've got mulch, topsoil, sodden seed, and patio stone. That's for the lawn care truck. 
There's the side marker lights, the flammable for the gas tank. There's XYZ snow plows for the back of the snow plow. We also have our 4x4 decal for the rear window and the GMC for the front window. And then here we also have 24 hour radio dispatch. So that would be for the glacier plowing. Down below we have Illinois 976 FL license plate. And over here we've got a Colorado 4470NK. But you can also print up your own license plates by checking out this video scrolling across here and add in something like British Columbia or even with the glacier plowing, you know, it'd be kind of cool is an Alaska plate or Northwest Territories for Canada. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video where I got to show you this amazing GMC pickup truck with the snow plow edition. And did you know that those Michaels figures were actually 125th scale? Well, not all of them, but quite a majority of them. So this little snow plow would make an excellent addition for those wintertime dioramas that you have, or maybe your wife has, that uh, you get to build those great winter houses. So if you want to support this channel, don't forget to click that join button and that would help us out considerably to get new equipment, model kits and everything else. And until next time, everybody, don't forget to check out our website at www.monster-hobbies.ca where you can buy some great model car and truck kits from me and we ship around the world. So until next time, everyone, happy model building and we'll see you out in the snow.